Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this interactive falling hearts. Happy Valentine's Day! I thought that today is a good opportunity for us to create some heart related sketch. So I did some research to find equations for us to create heart shapes and I found a bunch of equations here which will pick just one today, but you can explore afterwards. So today we'll be making this one that looks the most like a heart. And it has two equations, x and y, as a function of t. So basically these x and y equations are equations of the x and y coordinates that make up the shape of this heart. Why don't we start by making just one heart shape based on these two equations? So we have x equals to 16 times sine cubed. So let x to be equals to 16 times sine cubed. So I'm going to do sine times sine times sine of t here. And then let y to be equals to 13 times sine of t minus 5 times cosine of 2t minus 2 times cosine of 3t minus cosine of 4t. And now we need to also set the value of t. Let's say that we set t to be equals to, how about we map it to the mouse location and from 0 to width, and then we do it from degrees of 0 to 360 degrees. And because we're using the degrees mode, we need to also set the angle mode to degrees. All right, and how about we just plot it? Let's just plot an ellipse, so a circle with the x and y coordinates as the two arguments, and then how about we make it a size of 10? Let's click run. And okay, do you see that at the top left corner of our canvas? And that is because our shape right now is relative to the top left corner or the origin. So how about we also translate everything to the middle of the canvas and we can use the translate function and provide the two arguments width divided by two and height divided by two. All right. And as you can see here, we're just plotting one x and y coordinate at a time and that's not what we want to do right we want to be able to see the heart shape and we can do that by actually just using a for loop and the for loop will go from t equals to zero to t less than 360 t plus plus and then we just put in these two equations x and y inside here now we don't need this map function anymore and then instead of drawing an ellipse, actually, I'm going to draw a vertex. I'm going to use the vertex function that takes in two arguments, x and y, for each of the points that we want to plot. But if I were to click run now, you do not see anything because with the vertex function, we need two additional functions called begin shape and end shape. And it basically does what the name of the functions say, which is it begins the shape that we want to draw and it draws all of these vertex points and then we need to also end the shape and then let's try that whoa either something is wrong with our equation or this shape is kind of weird so let's see 13 sine of t this has to be cosine actually all right, so now we have an upside down heart. And this is because of the orientation of the x and y coordinates on our sketch where the y axis goes from negative to positive. So basically, we just need to multiply by negative one. And now we have a heart that is right side up. All right, but we also want to be able to make the heart bigger. And basically, we just need to multiply by a radius. So how about I set a radius to 10 and you just multiply the equation here by the radius. And for this, instead of negative 1 here, we just do a negative r. Multiply the whole thing and let's click run. And now we have a big heart. All right. So now that we have a shape of a heart, I'm going to put it inside a class. So let's come to this arrow here, click 
click the plus sign, click create file, and then I'm going to name it heart.js. And then before we start writing a class, go to index.html and come to this line of code here, copy and paste. And then you want to change the name of this to the name of the new JavaScript file that you just created. In my case, it's heart.js. And this is how you integrate a JavaScript file into your program. All right, so now we're ready to write a class. Let's start with the word class. I'm going to name this class heart. Then I'm going to write a constructor function and a display function. All right, so let's go back to here. What do we need in the constructor function? So we need radius, right? All right, so we just need radius. So let's set this.r to be equals to, I want to randomize the size actually, but how about we randomize it between two and four? All right, and then for display, we just copy and paste this whole set of code. Okay, and instead of translating it to the middle of the canvas, we actually want to translate it to this.x and this.y based on where we define x and y for each of the hearts. So I'm going to set it as a parameter here, x and y. And then for this, um, we need to put this dot r here, this dot r here, and then we should be all set. All right, let's try to create this, how about one heart? And I'm going to declare a variable called h, and h is going to be a new heart. And where do we want to set it? We want to set it, how about, let's just do the middle of the canvas. So width divided by 2 and height divided by 2, and then I'm just going to display that run you see that the size changes every time i click run and that is because we have a random size r between two and four all right maybe i kind of want it to be a little bit smaller how about we just do between just one so we get a size between zero and 0 0.99999 Next, I want to create a bunch of hearts based on where I drag my mouse. So what I want to do is I want to create a new function called mouse drag. And mouse drag actually is a built-in function within P5.js that returns the X and Y coordinates of the mouse where we drag the mouse. I want to, instead of just creating one heart, so I want to create a bunch of hearts. So I'm going to create an array called hearts but I'm not going to create new object hearts inside the setup function. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a heart every time I drag a mouse. So what I can do is I can say hearts.push and push is a function that pushes a new value inside an array. So we have an array called hearts and we're pushing a new value and the value that we're pushing in is an object, a new heart object. And we need to provide two arguments, x and y. And these two arguments we're going to give is the location of the mouse where I drag the mouse. All right. And if I click run now and I drag the mouse, nothing happens because we haven't displayed the hearts. So what we need to do is that we need to use a for loop to loop through from i equals to zero to i less than hearts dot length. And this basically is going to get us the length of an array hearts. So we don't know how many of the heart objects are already in the array, right? So we can just use this expression to get the size of the hearts array. And then i plus plus. And then with this, we can just do hearts of i dot display. And I drag my mouse. Oh, what happened? We forgot two key functions when we do any types of transformations. Let's go back to hearts.js. So we basically translate each of the hearts to the point this.x and this.y, which is the point at which we drag the mouse, right? The mouse x and mouse y. But we never return it back to the original point before we translate it again. So we need to use a function called push and pop. And basically, push and pop 
is a function where push saves the new transformation setting. So in this case, it translated to this point, this dot x and this dot y, and then it does all of these translation, and then pop returns it back to the original setting where the origin is at the top left corner of the canvas before it does a new translation for the new object when the display function is called. So if we click run now, all right, so now we get the hearts that we want on the canvas based on where I drag my mouse. Now, I want to create a new method called fall, and I want my hearts to fall down. So first, I'm going to create a new variable called dy, and let's set it to 1. Basically, dy is going to be the rate at which my heart falls. So the function is going to be called fall. And then basically, what are we going to do? We're going to set this dot y, and we're going to increment it by this dot dy. All right. And we also need to call this function hearts of i dot fall. Click run. And now our hearts are falling. Great. But how about we? set it to a random speed between two and three. All right, that looks nice. So the animation that you saw just now, the hearts are falling and they're falling off the screen over time. So those objects are actually still being computing over and over and over again, even though they're not being displayed on the canvas. And that's going to make our program less efficient. So what I want to do is that I want to delete the objects that are already off the screen. And I can do that by using a function called splice. And first, what I'm going to do is that we have these functions here that are basically displaying the hearts and then moving the hearts downwards, right? And then I want to write another for a loop of the same range, right? And then I want to write a conditional statement that says if hearts of i dot y. So if the y component of each of the heart objects is greater than height, and I'm going to add it with maybe 20 to give it an offset to make sure that it's really off the screen, then I want to delete it. And I can use a function, a method within the arrays class called splice. And splice can take in arguments in multiple ways. And one of the ways is first, you put in the index that you want to delete the value inside the array. And then you give it the second argument, which is from that index and include that index. How many values do you want to delete? So with this expression here, it says, hey, this hearts array, delete the object with the index i and just delete that object. So if I click run and I do this, you don't see the difference really. But if I were to print hearts.length, you can see that as the objects are off the screen, now the length decreases to zero over time. All right, and hopefully that makes our program a little bit more efficient, even though it's not a, really a problem at the moment. All right, so now how about we make it a little bit prettier by changing some colors. So first, I'm going to declare a variable, an array called colors, and then my colors is going to be set to this, and my background is going to be set to this color. All right. Okay, and then let's go to hearts.js. We're going to create a new variable called C for color. And I want to randomize the colors at which it's filling my heart. So we can do that by first using a random function. And the random function can take in an argument in multiple ways as well. But I want to randomize values between 0 and the length of my colors array. So I can just do colors.length. And actually, I'm going to comment this out. And let's go back to sketch. And I want to show you. All right, so if I do random 
of colors.length, which is what is colors.length? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's random of six, right? But this way, I use colors.length if you were to use a different color palette with fewer or more number of colors, then it will adjust based on that. So with this, if I print, you get a value, a decimal value between 0 and 6, but not including 6. So 0 to 5.99999. All right. But we want to use these values as an index values to pull the color inside the colors array. So we also need to use a function called floor that basically turns the decimal value into an integer that is closest to this decimal value, but round it down. So with this, if I click print, click run, you get a value between 0 and 5. Perfect. So that's what we're going to use. So we're going to do floor of random of colors dot length, but this will just give us the index value. So we also need to put in colors array and then of this value, right? So that's this dot C. And then once we have that, we're just going to fill it with this dot C. Click run. All right. That's so cute. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I hope that this is a light and fun quick tutorial on how to create heart-shaped animation. So give this one a try.